There's an extraordinary event that many researchers are warning about that's quickly deteriorating and is showing no sign of getting better anytime soon. If things don't change course in the next few years, the first to become scarce will be the insects, and next will be your food. Now, before you discount the demise of insects, you need to understand how critical their role is in your daily life. Maybe you've already noticed fewer bees, fireflies, or bugs on your windshield, and there's a reason for that. And in this video, I will tell you why it's in your best interest to pay attention to the signs the insects are showing us. I'll also tell you precisely what food sources will be most heavily impacted by this issue over the next few years, and most importantly, what, if anything, you can even do. And before we jump in, I want to point out up front that this video it relies heavily upon detailed research that is accessible to the public that is documenting this dilemma. I'll post links in the description section if you'd like to dig in further. We tried to break the information down in such a way that we didn't go too deep into the weeds, but instead we tried to focus on the big picture to give you a full understanding of what's playing out in your world right now so you can prepare accordingly. The Situation The global insect population is declining at an unprecedented rate estimated to be as high as 2% per year amid deforestation, pesticide and chemical use, pollution, artificial light pollution, and extreme shifts in weather patterns, insects are struggling. Now, the repercussions are devastating, wreaking havoc on crops, untamed flora, and the intricate web of creatures in our ecosystem that depend on insects as their sustenance. The reliance on these buzzing allies extends far beyond the mere production of crops, as approximately 80% of wild plants are reliant on insect pollination for their survival. Devoid of their irreplaceable soil stirring and soil grabbing services, our once flourishing farmlands succumb to desolation and erosion increases. Farmland can easily be transformed into a barren expanse of dust. Farms heavily rely on some insects and they fight against others. The grim reality looms large. Famine becomes an imminent threat, casting a shadow over our commercial agricultural production. A decline in the insect population will result in a significant decrease in agricultural output. Now, it may be hard to believe as the Japanese beetles or June bugs buzz your yard or you swat at a seemingly endless number of buzzing mosquitoes, and that's because some insects are actually thriving in these conditions. Disease spreading mosquitoes, ticks, and forest and crop destroying beetles, they actually can benefit from these wide swings and are often immune to chemical abatement processes. In general, it is the pest insects that are flourishing in our midst as they possess the ability to reproduce rapidly and really thrive under favorable human influence conditions. It's hard to believe the insect population is declining when aphids, isopods, beetles eat up the seedlings in your garden or ants invade your summer picnic. Still, it's also difficult to wrap our heads around how many insects there are. Regarding diversity, insects represent two-thirds of the world's 1.5 million documented species, with millions more bugs still undiscovered. And to put this in perspective, the whole of the animal kingdom comprises only approximately 73,000 vertebrates, animals. That's animals with a backbone, from humans to birds and fish. Now, these backbone-willing animals represent a mere fraction, less than 5% of the overall known species within the animal kingdom. And to visualize this in yet another way, there's roughly the same number of ladybug species alone as there are all species of the mammals on the planet. Now, typically, we only hear about this concern when it comes to pollinating insects like bees or butterflies and flies. Their contribution to our food supply cannot be understated. Insects pollinate more than 75% of global crops. They also break down waste materials and manure, churn up soil, and control excessive plant growth. They're nature's gardeners. Study after study is revealing that this decline is across the board and at an accelerating and alarming rate. It's estimated that the world has already lost almost 10% of all insect species over the last century and a half, and their decline is accelerating, not slowing down. That's a conservative estimate, too. According to one study, flying insect numbers have plunged by 60% since 2004 alone. Some studies show an alarmingly high rate of population decline. Now, the scary part of this is that we don't know what we don't know. The insect population is so vast that the populations of only about 1% of it have ever been assessed. Of the small fraction that has been assessed, 20% or one in five of them are considered threatened, and an even higher percentage was in decline. Spillover. Already suffering from a significant avian flu outbreak, birds rely heavily upon the insect population for sustenance. Since 1970, the number of birds in North America has declined by 29%. 
Freshwater fish and oceanic shoreline fish, they rely heavily upon the insect population. Rodents, snakes, and small mammals, they rely upon insects for sustenance. And larger predators eat these smaller animals. Any way you look at the problem, it really comes up badly. If you see a decline in the natural food source insects, you also realize a natural decline in other animal species. There's a direct correlation between declining food sources and declining populations. The decline in insect populations can have cascading effects on aquatic ecosystems and avian species. And many fish rely on insects as a crucial part of their diet, especially during certain life stages. With the reduction in insect prey, Fish populations may decline, affecting both commercial and recreational fishing industries. Similarly, numerous bird species depend on insects as a primary food source for themselves and their offspring. Now, the decline in insect populations, it can actually lead to decreased bird populations, disrupting the delicate balance of ecosystems and potentially causing shifts in biodiversity. Furthermore, the decline of insects may trigger unintended consequences, such as an increase in the proliferation of harmful organisms. With fewer insect predators to keep them in check, populations of fungi, algae, and parasites can experience rapid growth. Now, this imbalance can further disrupt ecosystem dynamics, impacting plant health, water quality, and overall ecosystem stability. The decline in insect population can also contribute to a rise in fungal and parasitic populations, as these populations have fewer insects to consume them and keep explosions in check. Now, those fungi and parasites are then more apt to infect human populations as they seek out new hosts. Immediate impact. The most immediate impact on humans at the top of the food chain will be a decrease in crops that rely upon these pollinators. Almonds, apples, apricots, most fruit trees, bananas, cherries, grapes, melons, squash, tomatoes, and more, they're all gonna suffer a production decline in the coming years. Other crops are wind pollinated, like wheat, rice, corn, barley, and nut trees. Though these do not rely upon pollinators as much, they will also suffer from animals and other insects turning to them to compensate for the lack of other insects as a food source. And using more potent pesticides to fight off more evasive insects, it's gonna persist in the environment for more extended periods and further decline the insect populations. In fact, spraying stronger and stronger pesticides are part of the reason for the decline, as detrimental bugs develop resistance while beneficial insects experience mass die-offs. The repeated application of a specific category of pesticides for pest control can result in undesirable alterations in the pest gene pool, leading to a phenomenon known as pesticide resistance. Initially, when a pesticide is introduced, a small fraction of the pest population survives exposure due to their unique genetic composition. Now, these individuals pass down the genes responsible for resistance to the succeeding generation. And with each subsequent pesticide use, the proportion of individuals with reduced acceptability in the population actually increases. And this ongoing selection process gradually enhances the population's resistance to the pesticide. And over 500 species of insects, mites, and spiders worldwide have exhibited varying degrees of resistance to pesticides. Extreme weather patterns and fluctuations are also significant factors in the mass death of insects. Unusually warm weather causes insect eggs to hatch prematurely, but this can be followed by abrupt frost, creating what is known as a fall spring. During a fall spring, the warm weather deceives plants into emerging from dormancy and causes insects to hatch too early. Similarly, when winter arrives suddenly and earlier than expected, the extreme and rapid drop in temperatures can actually kill insects before they have a chance to lay their eggs. So when you hear the term fall spring or realize a sudden and unseasonably shift to Arctic temperatures, it's important to understand that these events directly contribute to an extensive decline in insect populations. Agriculture may garner the biggest headlines, but the decline in the insect population will also result in a direct decline of both fish and fowl. The most immediate impact of this decline is on our food sources. And the secondary effect is an acceleration of changes to our environment. More bad bugs thrive, fish and bird populations decline, and fungi, algae, and parasite populations, they end up blooming. Basically, there's more of the bad stuff and less of the good stuff. Insects really play a crucial role in the natural world by connecting various levels of the food chain, and they act as a bridge between plants and other animals, including humans. Many insects, they're abundant, and their sheer numbers provide essential services vital for our well-being. These services include pollinating fruits, vegetables, and nuts, controlling weeds and pests in agriculture, preventing the spread of diseases, 
carried by insects, and helping decompose organic material like leaves, wood, and dung. And these activities contribute to the essential processes such as nutrient recycling, soil formation, and water purification. There's a real delicate interconnectedness of the ecosystems. The repercussions of the decline in the insect population extend far beyond just crop production, affecting various aspects of our environment, wildlife, and food sources, ultimately threatening the delicate balance of nature. What can you do? Believe it or not, it's not too late. You can make a difference with a few fundamental changes to your life. You may not be able to set up and care for a beehive as I did in a previous video. Most of us can't do this, but even with time and land, I admittedly found it challenging and my bees really didn't make it that long. I did everything by the book, but in the area that I raised them, there were several vineyards that used chemicals known to adversely impact bees and they just didn't survive. There are many practical things that you could do around your house to help insects, but minimally, you should focus on ensuring your own food security. Understand what crops are likely to fail and realize how this will dramatically increase the prices and availability of foods. You're going to want to plant gardens that can endure this decline and stockpile foods that won't. As I've shared several times on this channel recently, I'm personally going to be jumping into vertical gardening over the next several months. I am completely new to this, but I realize that due to many of the environmental stresses such as extreme weather and exposure to parasites, these factors can limit my growing ability and I'd like to learn how to develop a growing setup in a more controlled environment. You should also understand that something as simple as a contrasting rise in the mosquito population while other insects are in decline, it can have devastating effects on humans. Malaria, West Nile virus, yellow fever, and Zika virus, they're all spread by mosquitoes. Again though, your biggest concern is probably food, food, and food. As you hear more about declining insect populations and extreme weather events, I would encourage you to understand that these will directly and immediately impact your food supply. When you hear of an infestation of some insect population decimating a crop, don't dismiss the threat of the insect apocalypse altogether. Recognize that the rise of that harmful insect may result from the decline of another, more friendly insect populations or the animals that feed upon them. Overall, all indicators are pointing to commercial food production continuing to decline. Whether this is an extinction level event or merely one that will force its own correction over time, regardless of human mismanagement of our environment, remains to be seen. In the meantime, you would be wise to watch our videos on gardening in small spaces. Doing that lets you understand the basics you need to learn to grow at least some of the food that you need to survive. I would encourage you to watch our video on how to build a one-year food storage. It's easier than you think, but so critical if you hope to endure the challenges that we face in the future. Look, prepping isn't a guarantee of survival by any means, but not prepping is almost a guarantee that you won't survive. You don't have to follow the insects in their decline, but you do need to find ways by which you can still thrive. What do you think? Have you noticed a decline of some insects and an explosion of others in your area? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, stay safe out there.